Oh, hey, <laughs> didn't see you there. Sorry, I was just uh, watching the amazing sunrise in Chinaris. You know, I've been playing DayZ for quite a long time. So many things have changed, but a lot of it has stayed the same. The one thing that has definitely changed is base building. Daisy base building, you either love it or you hate it. It has a lot of upside and a lot of what ifs that go along with it. So let's break it down into three categories of players. Group A is your solo or two man squads. These players won't benefit too much from having a massive base filled with cars, guns, food, and every other item in the game. Instead, these players should be using their base more like a small outpost, where they can come by, loot up if they've died, grab some food, and do some light inventory management. These players will do much better in self-made and small bases or just by having a tent or two on their own. There's no real need for anything bigger unless you have a lot of free time and willpower. Uh, most of these bases should be pushed inland enough to prevent being raided, but not so far that it's impossible to reach from most spawns. A good sweet spot is in the triangle of Mista, Delina, and Pasor uh, but it's putting you pretty close to some really good loot areas with the contaminated zones nearby they just added. There are other locations you should consider as well, but you would need to look at the area surroundings to see if it would even be worth it for you to place it there, just to verify that there are some nearby locations that will make it worth your while. Group B is your player groups of 3 to 5. It's pretty common to see in DayZ and much trickier to fight compared to the previous group. Squads of 3 to 5 have the luxury of being able to spread out if they need to to gather supplies for building a much larger base. These groups will be setting up bases for longer term stays as it will be much harder to raid their bases assuming they are online of course. These players can be much more aggressive and strategic in where they put their bases. Depending on their playstyle, they can place their base just south of the northwest airfield so they can hit the entire list of stays between there and Zalingors. This will ensure you have the largest chance of getting plenty of military gear as well as some much needed base building supplies. Having the larger group lets you take control of these areas which are usually pretty populated. It will make for some much more entertaining moments, plus it gives you a much needed foothold on some of those higher traffic areas like Tipsy in the airfield. Playing with this many players will increase how fast you can get your base up and running and gives you some much needed base defense for hoarding more guns, vehicles, and supplies. Group C is the rarest of the three. You can go your entire DayZ career without ever even seeing any of them. Group C is what I consider to be between 10 to 20 players altogether. It's much more difficult to get this many players to all work together and if you're like me there's no way you have 20 friends. If you can get this many players together, taking advantage of the larger land areas north of the airfield will be super beneficial. Getting the chance to control the entire northern section of Chinaris, hoarding more supplies than you know what to do with, and being able to fight off anyone who tries to raid you, it doesn't get any better than that. The only real downside is when the group is large you'll need several vehicles to transport everyone around. Of course this major base will need to be extremely large to make room for all the people and supplies you'll have which also means being prepared to gather building supplies for hours on end. I'll leave it up to you and depending on which player type you are to see if it is worth it, you'll have to verify that on your own, you know, based on your player needs and how you play the game exactly. Uh, more than likely it's not going to be beneficial for you and there's not going to be much need for it, but who knows, you might change your mind at some point point. you might want to go build a base. If you do ever change your mind, try to keep in mind the kind of player groups that we talked about from A, B, and C and to see which one you kind of fall into. If you're going to be solo, you're going to be much better off just going on a tent or maybe even a small little base versus if you have 3 to 5 players or even 10 to 20 players where you can build much larger bases, have so many vehicles and guns and gear and everything else that you might need for the end game. And who knows, if you're crazy enough, you can always just go to Cherno, get in the apartments, build you a nice little fort with 7 to 8 different fences and just let it rip. I mean, what are they going to do, stop you? No, of course they're not going to stop you, but you're probably going to get raided and end up losing most of your supplies. If you're down for that and you know the risk, I mean, go for it. Do what you have to do. You're also going to want to keep in mind how difficult it is to get certain supplies. You can find certain items pretty often in a lot of the industrial sections, like wood is obviously going to be pretty easy to find as you're always surrounded by trees, but some of the other items you're going to have to go looking pretty hard for and hoping that you can actually get lucky and find some of them. Of course, it's going to make the chances of you finding these items a lot greater the more players you have. Being by yourself, you can only search so much versus if you had five other players with you. Of course, you'll be able to cover a lot more area and a lot of different cities so that we can actually split up and look for... So let's talk about what tools you might need when you go to do base building. So it might not be as obvious as you might think of which tools you need because there are some that are actually going to be completely useless and some that you will need for almost every single thing you try to build. The three most important ones that I found personally is the hammer, the pliers, and the nails. The nails obviously you will use for everything. Hammers you'll use for fences and watchtowers. Pliers you'll actually have to use for just fences slash gates. It's kind of weird. It can also be used for dismantling like the crowbar, but we'll get into the crowbar a bit later. 
Uh, nails, obviously, are going to be needed for everything, as you're going to be dealing with wood for the most part, and you'll be having to nail everything together. It kind of adds into some realism to make it a bit more realistic, I understand, but it's going to be very difficult to find the amount of nails you'll, you'll need for all of this. Now, for gathering your wood, you could just use a hatchet or a splitting axe to cut down most of your wood, or actually, you could also use a handsaw if you're near any lumber piles to get a lot of wood that way. The hacksaw you would think would be pretty useful, but actually from what I'm looking at and from what I've understood for the longest time of Daisy, you actually cannot use it for, uh, for most needs for base building, so it makes it pretty useless. It is good for weapons, as you can saw off certain barrels, but other than that, there's not really need for it in base building. Now the two that don't really make sense to me that I've looked at for quite some time is the screwdriver and the wrench. So the screwdriver, you would think you would need it for screws, however screws aren't currently in the game which makes the screwdriver a bit useless to have and kind of questionable why it's even here. At the moment of me filming this, screwdrivers are only used for opening food and you can use it as a melee weapon that have little to no damage. So if you do see this around, if you need a melee weapon, sure, go ahead. But if you're thinking you can use it later on for building your base, there's no real reason because it, it's actually useless. There's nothing you can do with it. The wrench is another one that kind of concerns me. Not really concerns me. I guess that's the wrong word for it. It is kind of weird what they're doing with it. So just like the screwdriver, there's no real use for it. It can be used to open food and that's it. You can't even use it to fix anything on the vehicle, which doesn't make any sense because, you know, I don't know about you, but if you've worked on a vehicle, more than likely you're going to use a wrench at some point in time. It's, it's the only real option for certain, you know, certain situations. So the fact that it is in the game makes me wonder if maybe they have something planned a bit later on. Maybe they're going to add in screws and bolts, which usually that's what wrenches are used for. So screws for the screwdriver, bolts for the wrench, which makes me wonder if they do have something planned for base building in the future. I'm not fully certain. I do want to speculate on a bit more and maybe do some more looking into maybe some dev conversations to see what they're talking about. But at the moment, there's no actual use for these items. I almost added the crowbar to the list of useless tools slash items that you need for base building. Uh, but it does have it does have its perks. Uh, so the crowbar is actually used to dismantle certain player built structures. Other than that, there's no real need for it. So if you do see it, don't panic if you can't put it in your bag as you're probably be better off with the pliers anyways. I'm sure there are certain times you need the crowbar over the pliers, but at the moment there's not really much use for it, so I wouldn't go dropping any guns to uh, pick this up if I were you. So after thinking about building a base and really looking at what you want out of DayZ and thinking about how easy it would be or difficult, depending on who you are, if you have decided to go through with building a base, congratulations, more power to you. If you haven't, I do understand as it can be a lot of work and you might not have the time to put into it. So that's going to be the bare minimum of what to keep in mind when base building day Z, so no matter what group you fall into, you will be perfectly prepared for when you can start to set up shop. If you like the video, make sure you click that like button and don't forget to subscribe. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.